Welcome back to Mayo Clinic Radio. I'm Dr. Tom Chives. And I'm Tracy McCray. Tracy, if I ask you to drop down right here in the studio and do 20 push-ups, could you do it? Yes. Do you want to challenge me? Is that what no. you're saying? Could you do 20? Sure. You know, there are not very many people who could do that. I'm kind of impressed. <laughs> how, how many could you do? I, I'm not going to talk about it. About two? Well, you, but here's here's the interesting <laughs> thing. Oh, I could do I could do 20. Okay, good. Now, whether or not you can or can't do a few push-ups can tell you a lot about your health, believe it or not. That's according to a Mayo Clinic anesthesiologist and human performance researcher, Dr. Mike Joyner, who joins us in studio to explain. It's good to see you again, Dr. Joyner. Always a pleasure, Tracy and Tom. Now, I didn't say that I could do multiple sets of 20 push-ups, <laughs> well, no, but no, I could do 20. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and how many people in the country can do 20 push-ups? Oh, a small minority. Yeah. A small minority. 10 or 20%, maybe. Oh, I bet even less than that. Is that right? When you take all age groups, all comers time. So now you're an anesthesiologist, meaning you put people to, to sleep. Correct. So w- what do you know about push-up? you got a lab, too. <laughs> well, Explain to our audience. Well, I'm also a physiologist, and, and I got into medicine because I was interested in exercise physiology. And one of the things we do in exercise physiology is measure oxygen uptake. So people have a mask on. We measure their breathing, measure their blood pressure, measure their heart rate. And when I was a medical student back in Tucson, I walked into the operating rooms at the VA hospital there, and I said, my God, this looks like an exercise test, (laughs) except the patient's asleep. And I realized that the anesthesia is the flip side of exercise physiology because, Tom, in exercise, we worry about how the brain is keeping the body alive and how it's coordinating all these body systems uh, to, to, to keep the oxygen going to the muscles, keep the heart rate in good shape, the blood pressure, and so forth. In anesthesia, we turn those systems off, and the anesthesiologist and the anesthesia care team are the people that really become the patient's brain stem, regulate heart rate, blood pressure, temperature, and so forth. Mm. So it's really the flip side of the same coin. But we still don't know how general anesthesia works, right? Correct. It's crazy. Correct. It I mean, crazy. whoever came up with a drug and gave it to somebody, they went to sleep. I hey, mean, and it works. Right. Yeah. Let's just it, keep doing oh, it. Thank goodness. <laughs> the power of one push-up is the name of the article in the Atlantic. Correct. What is the power of one push-up? Well, there was a recent study uh, done on some firefighters that showed, um, followed them for a number of years, and showed that individuals who could do more push-ups had better health outcomes over a number of years. Now, you can say, well... Maybe these people were healthier, and that's why they could do more push-ups, or you could say that they were training harder or so forth. But really, Tracy, the whole idea of a push-up or any other marker of physical strength or physical fitness is that it's highly correlated or highly predictive of your future health. Almost anything you can do, how fast you can get up off the floor, and older people, can they even get out of a chair? Grip strength, a treadmill score. All sorts of things like that are predictive because what people are learning as people get into later middle age and past 65, a lot of the problem is, is frailty. People just become frail. Tom, you saw it in orthopedic surgery. They, they, they slip, they fall, they break something. And frail older people, A, don't slip and fall, or not frail, robust, healthy, physically fit, strong older people are much less likely to slip and fall. And if they do, they're better able to recover. So. Is there anything magic about push-ups? No. Is there anything magic about being robust and vigorous? Yes. Now, the original article in The Atlantic was, uh, you must know him, is it a Dr. Kales, K-A-L-E-S? No, I, do. I, I, I know one of the people farther down the list on the, on the articles. Okay, but he said push-up abilities could predict heart disease. True? Correct. True? Correct. So could hand grip strength. So could almost any other marker. Any other marker of general fitness. So there's not anything particularly predictive about push-ups. Per it's se, just, no. It's a measure of your right. what, measure of physical ability. And Tom, when you get into a large population, all of these things sort of correlate. The people that are in best shape in one area typically are in the best shape in another area. I think I read once that the the health that you, the health level that you're at when you are 60 is also very predictive of what your next 30 to 40 years Correct. of your life is going to be like. Correct. And so does that have the same thing with the robust health? Yep. And and so, again, vigorous, fit people in their late 50s and early 60s tend to live a long time. Now, I just saw a new paper out, and it's in the Mayo Clinic Proceedings, from the group at Ball State. And they tracked people who went from inactive to active in middle age. And so they saw and people that remained inactive and people who remained active. And what was most interesting about that is the people who increased their activity – increase their exercise and increase their working out and shift it from the low activity, low fitness group to the high fitness group 
got the same health benefits of people who were, were very fit when they entered the program. Oh, so you can start later. Correct. <laughs> like retirement? Uh, never too late. Never too late. <laughs> One of the things that you've said, you were quoted as saying, is that more than pecs or triceps, push-ups build conscientiousness. What did you mean by that? Well, I, conscientiousness is is kind of an interesting term that describes people's really thinking about the future. Do you see a connection between your current behavior and the future? Do you finish what you start? If you go to the doctor and they say do X, do you do X? Do you follow guidelines? Do you wear your seat belts? And so forth. And, and what's interesting is, is if you look at people who do uh, regular vigorous exercise, people who are physically active, people who watch their diet, people who don't smoke, there's typically a suite of behaviors that they engage in that show that they see some connection between their current behavior and a future outcome. They're conscientious and about a lot of different things. A lot things. of different things. It's kind of a general skill set. And, and one of the arguments has been that, that one thing, the most important thing anybody can do is have a mother that teaches them to, 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 to you know, pick up. <laughs> and, and Make their and bed. Make their bed yeah. and, and just uh, teaches them that there's some outcome between their current behavior and the future, the future. And, and a little bit of delayed gratification. There is no question, <clears throat> excuse me, in your mind that being physically fit can prolong your life? I, I think that evidence is overwhelming in, in so many ways, in so many studies. And really this was, you know, there was anecdotal evidence going back to the time of the ancient physicians making comments about it. But the first data in, in the uh, occupational area when they looked at physically active bus conductors versus inactive drivers, they looked at clerks versus postal workers and so forth, began to show that. They looked in, in San Francisco um, at uh, docks that were either more or less mechanized, and the less mechanized the dock, the longer people lived, mm -hmm. and so forth. So I think it's, it's been demonstrated over and over again. Then there are these interventional studies that I mentioned uh, that are starting to come online to show a positive effect. Let's talk to the listener who uh, is previously middle-aged and inactive and wants to ramp Correct. up going into the 60s, like we're just talking about, to become more robust, because that definitely is possible. So you can do some push-ups. Go for a walk. Go for a walk. Go for a walk. The first 10 minutes of exercise per day or physical activity is highly beneficial. People think 30 minutes uh, most days of the week, but people get a benefit with as much or as little as 10, 10 minutes a day. And then, you know, you don't have to go to the gym. You don't have to get a bunch of fancy equipment. You can certainly do some calisthenics at home. There's a terrific book that you can find uh, on the internet called the 5BX program by the Canadian Air Force <laughs> from the late 50s or 60s. And uh, it's really terrific. And, and what happened is, is that they noticed the pilots up in the northern air bases uh, where there weren't gyms and weren't a lot of facilities were getting out of shape. And they developed a little pamphlet for, for a workout program that people could do literally anywhere with no equipment. <laughs> Squats, yeah, lunges, yeah. Yeah, push-ups, push sit-ups, <laughs> you know, running in place and sure. so forth. And it was called the 5BX program. And, and, and it's fantastic because A, it works. B, it's not very time um, time demanding. See, you get these beautiful Art Deco late six, late fifties, early sixties pictures and graphs right. that are worth reading because it's cool. you know, and it's almost like a little comic book. <laughs> All right, the power of a push-up. Dr. Mike Joyner is an anesthesiologist and a researcher at Mayo Clinic. So if you can do a few or more push-ups, you can do 20. It tells a lot about your overall health. You're going to live forever. Push-up abilities can indeed be a predictor of heart and blood vessel disease. And, and what kills more Americans than anything else? Heart, heart disease. disease. You bet. Yes, it's time to get fit it for is. all of us. And there is a connection, <laughs> indeed, between what you do, what, how you live, and what will happen to you later and how long you'll live. And by the way, the name of the book is the 5BX Program. Yeah, and you should be able to find a PDF of it online. It's, it's, it's for, again, from the Canadian Air Force, Royal Canadian Air Force, in the late 50s or early 60s. Dr. Michael Joyner, thanks for being with us. Thank you, Tom.